Live from the Palace Hotel in San Francisco, it's The Q at the HGST Press and Industry Analyst Briefing. Brought to you by headline sponsor, HGST. Here are your hosts, Stu Miniman and Jeff Frick. Hi, welcome back. We are here live at the Sheridan Palace in downtown San Francisco at the HGST Industry Analyst and Press event. It's been an exciting day, a lot of new news, a lot of new product introductions, uh, and a lot of really transformation in the data center that's driven by the, the underlying really storage technology and the stuff where all this big data's got to actually sit. Joined by this segment uh, with my co-host. Hi, I'm Stu Miniman with Wikibon.org, and joining us for this segment, we're pleased to have Mike Cordano, who's the president of HGST. Mike, thank you so much for joining us here on theCUBE. Great, thanks for having me. Yeah, so, so we were talking before, before the camera started rolling about just you know the, the diversity of opportunities. Right. I, I think this is, it was Steve Milligan said uh, this morning, mm -hmm. the president of, uh, and CEO of uh, uh, Western Digital, which right. you guys are a division of. Right. Um, so, can, can start off uh, for, for our audience, talk about you know, what is the opportunity in data today? Yeah, I think we see a broad set of opportunities, right? We see lots of infrastructure changing around us. Uh, the requirements of that infrastructure are changing very rapidly, and that's being driven by innovation out, out of the hyperscale uh, cloud service providers. So, our opportunity is to develop down two general um, vectors. One is very high performance, which we're doing through our Flash Products Group lines of products and, and innovation. And secondly is around the massive amounts of data, so a more capacity-centric story where we're innovating around uh, and through our elastic storage team. So we, wanted, we really want to develop opportunities that are at both ends of the performance spectrum, all the way up at tier zero, and then in a new sub-segment that we call active archiving. All right, c can you walk through for, for us some of the, the really the, the, the journey of HGST? So, you know, we, I, it struck me you said over <coughs> 7,000 patents from uh, the heritage in disk drives, and it, it's not just hard drives and flash right. uh, SSDs. There's a lot of software that you've yep. done in-house and through acquisitions. So, you know, who is HGST? What makes up the company today? Yeah, the, it's a very interesting story. Obviously, it goes back to IBM and the invention of the hard drive. Uh, but through time, we've accumulated lots of complementary assets around storage. So uh, obviously, you've got the roots of HDD, but we've coupled with that in the last several years a lot of MVM or, or flash-based assets. So both at the device level, but m increasingly importantly, we're adding now uh, capabilities through software value add through three acquisitions last year uh, to deliver value on top of the devices themselves. So where you see us go uh, is we'll take those assets. We acquire three companies, uh, Velobit, uh, Virident and Estec, uh, each were unique in their own right. Two of them were largely software providers. So if you look underneath them, we got software uh, products, software algorithms, and software developers more importantly. So that's really helping us create uh, a level of data services above the device itself. Uh, we're operating uh, now at a fairly low level, but we want to deliver data services that we can package and deliver to the market uh, as a new building block that can be consumed, whether it be by our traditional OEM partners, or by a cloud service provider. All right, so go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, so so when we, we saw the consolidation in the, in the disk drive industry, right. it really got down to the device. And we're starting to see some consolidation around uh, the, the, the flash marketplace, but you guys have aspirations to be more than just a device. Right. Where, where, where do you see uh, you know, the kind of things like device affinity and uh, some of these expansions in software? Where, where, where does HGST fit into that flash ecosystem? Yeah, so I think where we see we, where we fit is, obviously we think there's a foundational element of devices, whether they be flat, MVM based, forget flash, because there's next generations of that coming, but also rotating magnetic media. But, that's not enough for us. So now what we see is an opportunity uh, to move up the stack. We use that term sort of liberally now. Uh, and what we mean by that is really moving up the next layer of, of the stack and delivering a really a new aggregation point so we can deliver a more value added building block to the marketplace. So I think we announced some products that are evidence of that today, uh, both on the flash and on the drive side. Yeah, I'm, I'm wondering if you can say, how do you feel you can <laughs> differentiate yourself from your competition in the marketplace. So specifically guys like, like Seagate, like SanDisk, um, we, we talked in the session this morning, uh, you said there's some design differences, but fundamentally, you know, what is your, you know, your vision for? Yeah, so I think fit? where we sit today, we're in a unique position of our competitors. We have a broad portfolio of HDD, of course, and there are competitors that uh, 
have that, and we have a broad portfolio of SSD and growing. Uh, we're uniquely positioned to have both today, so we've got a bit of a head start, so we're happy about that. Uh, but for us, we, we're looking forward to competing on different dimensions, right? It's not just about aerial density, capacity, or performance, which is in the devices world. Over time, we now want to be able to you know, look out beyond us, understand the, the applications and workloads we're operating in, and be able to develop solutions that are more uniquely uh, tuned for that. So that's a very broad world. I think there's room for a number of us to compete there. I think where we think we're well situated is we're ahead of the game in acquiring the capabilities to deploy to this market. So I think we've got a good head start. Uh, we have much more to do, but it's, it's a broad world. And certainly we see it as there's room for uh, a number of us to be successful, uh, but we're off to a good start. We're very comfortable about our position and bullish about our future. Mike, you talked about a couple things earlier today that I picked up on. One I thought was real interesting, you know, the data's value increases over time was the statement right. that you made. At the same time as the real business impact of, you know, what do you keep, what's it worth, your quotes, uh, and what's the business impact? Right. And then you've got this other thing, these cloud service providers now that are delivering hyperscale, but never seen before, generally single or not a whole lot of applications, but really changing the game in terms of their requirements, they're building custom boxes, right. et cetera. I wonder if you could talk about how this, these, these things, big data, how much do you keep, business value, hyperscale, also I think really what those guys have done is shown the value of latency, right. really spelled it out clearly, not right. just in the financial services, yep. but I want to see my picture now, and there's actual value to mm -hmm. that. How that's tr transformed your business and where you see that growth opportunity that comes from that. Well, uh, that really underpins this notion that we actually rolled out two years ago at the broader WDC Analyst Day. We, we, we talked about explicitly wanting to invest, we call it the barbell approach, which means outside the traditional sort of state uh, storage array, we want to really invest at the very highest end, so the performance uh, application acceleration into the spectrum, and then we were non-specific two years ago, we got much more specific today, we want to create a new category of storage, because we do believe when you think about the data growth that's out there, the challenges around how much data you can store, there's room for a brand new category, and it is elastic to price. It's got to have certain performance uh, attributes, you have to be able to access it rapidly, that's why tape and traditional deep archive technologies may not be appropriate for it, but if we can deliver adequate accessibility at a much different cost point, that really opens up a new segment that, as we see it today, does not exist. It does not exist. Yeah, so Mike, one of the biggest challenges for the big storage companies today is the cloud providers themselves, because they're typically not going to buy you know, a storage array from you know, EMC or NetApp, just because it, it doesn't fit for what they're doing. Mm -hmm. You guys, are in many of those accounts. Can right. you talk about you know, your relationship with some of the big cloud providers and what have you learned uh, from them uh, that's helped uh, you know, drive some of your product roadmap? Well, I think the biggest advantage to us has been the cloud service engagements for us has been, and this started probably five years or so ago, that put us directly in contact with an end user so we could understand exactly what was happening, what their needs were, and we began to sort of educate ourselves and understand here's the opportunity. So you combine that sort of access and insight uh, with the fact that much of the innovation is happening in those same, uh, same places, we're in a really catbird seat position to understand, well, if we can innovate based upon that knowledge and that understanding, it puts us in a unique position to deliver value added to the market. And, and they're really pushing limits in ways that the enterprise clients just didn't push it. No question, I mean, they're operating at a scale that you can't see anywhere else, so it's, it's testing the infrastructure in new and different ways. They're also delivering services. I think Dave talked about in his presentation, this statistic that says all, you know, of new uh, cloud scale applications, 75% of them are data intensive. Uh, that's creating new sort of an, a new application environment with new requirements, and, and we're right on the front line of understanding that. Uh, we have an opportunity to begin to innovate against that challenge. All right. Are, are there any? You shared the example of LinkedIn. I, I talked to Brendan earlier about uh, Netflix. Are there any other uh, you know big big cloud guys that you can share? Uh, unfortunately, we can't. <laughs> you know, we talked about the ones that we could talk about. So I think we, we, we're happy to say we're engaging across the broad waterfront of the hyperscale guys, but uh, we, we need to maintain our confidence. All, all right, I, I won't poke too hard on that then. So you, you've talked a bunch about going up the stack, right. um, and you know, there, there's there's a little bit of a natural tension between you know your customers, which you said broke into two pieces: the OEMs, who's server and storage guys, and the cloud guys. So you know. You know, where, where, where do you guys feel that you can really innovate and add value there, and how do you create a, kind of a new building block beyond just uh, the device itself? Yeah, our sense is we have, to, we have to architect in a modular way. 
because depending on who the customer is, they're going to take more or less of our technology, right? So if you think about building at a foundational devices level, uh, layering value add on top of that, depending on who we're talking to, and depending upon their strategy, you're going to see them want to take more of that. So we're not going to create a vertical solution that can only be sold in, in that way, because that would limit our market acceptance. We want to be able to sell, if you think of a layer cake, we want to be able to sell one layer, two, or the entire cake, depending on the customer and requirements. So that's the way we're thinking about building out our, our capabilities and solutions, and it really lines up nicely to the way the market's evolving as well. All right, can, can you give us a little insight, your workforce itself, how much of it is today focused on software versus hardware, and where do you th see things going over the next couple of years? Well, I think today, I mean, obviously in our employee population, we have a manufacturing operation, so the bulk of our employees are in the operational side, but if we think about development or in the engineering part of the company, um, we still have a preponderance of the engineers that are working on uh, hard drive, but that has uh, grown substantially about, uh, around soft, excuse me, around both flash-based assets as well as software. So, you know, where we had, if you go back, we probably had people working on software. This excludes firmware, which is a, a nice distinct, distinguishing point. We probably had less than 100 people before we really got serious about moving in this, a, into the software arena. Now we've got, you know, approximating 500 people and growing in the software. Area. All right, so it, it's interesting. I'm, I'm a hardware guy by background, studying right. mechanical engineering, and you know, all you've heard for the last bunch of years is software is eating the world. So where do you see the value of hardware as software becomes a greater component of, of IT? Well, I think it's interesting to see. I, I think there's been a misnomer in the industry where it's sort of like, well, let's go to the cheapest, most commoditized ha hardware, and the software guys will take care of it. They'll make it work in any environment. What we see is the, uh, as things evolve is, frankly speaking, uh, there's more specialized requirements being asked for from the hardware. So I think we're just going through one of those natural cycles where the hardware infrastructure is going to change. The traditional kind that was sort of multi-use may not be the way it evolves, but in certain high-scale applications, there's specific needs that, uh, that people have from the hardware. The fact that we see that coming, we can innovate against that, and we can do it in a way that we can connect it to the higher, directly to the higher level values of the stack uh, is an important differentiation for us. We talked about this device affinity, that's what we mean by it. Yeah, uh, absolutely, great point there. I mean, if you, if you look at Amazon, they're not just buying off the shelf, they're, they're working on it. Um, I'm curious, the, the other one that gets a lot of dis discussion lately is the open compute that mm -hmm. Facebook's driving. Right. Uh, w what's your take on <coughs> things like open compute and open stack and the like? Yeah, I think we're generally in support of that. We think it's an important trend. In fact, many of our customers, when we deliver a solution, if we're not creating a sufficient level of openness, they're just not going to buy. So whether it be a hardware uh, open community or a software open community, you'll see us be very active in that uh, and generally speaking supportive of it. So Mike, to just kind of circling back to the service providers, the cloud service providers, you know, you said we're always on this cycle, right? And, and now it seems like everyone's kind of cycling away from, you know, kind of general purpose servers. Now we hear over and over again at, at, at AWS reInvent and other people that they're building purpose-built uh, machines. So are you seeing that trend? Is it, is it getting anywhere outside of the, the hyperscale providers? And, and how does that help you guys deliver, I guess it does, the, the different component level right. pieces to fit into those? Yeah, I th we do see that trend continuing. You saw it in our announcements today. Even within the capacity enterprise range, we now have three drives we announced today. They're all purpose-built and targeted you know, sl at slightly different slices in the marketplace. Uh, I think that's being appreciated. I think some of the applications or, or architectural sort of slices we can carve off have enough scale to justify a, a more purpose-built architecture. Yeah. All right, so, so we've seen this consolidation of, of the marketplace been going on for a while. How, how do you see the evolving landscape out there? You partner with uh, you know, the, a number of the, the NAND suppliers. Uh, you know, as, as you look, um, you know, how would you describe where we are in the overall marketplace? Well, I, I think we're in early innings, obviously. There's well over 100 uh, companies providing SSDs in the market today. That looks an awful lot like the, uh, the hard drive business if you go back in time. Uh, so what, we, what we're focused on is I think over time that will consolidate. It's a natural evolution. What we're focused on is delivering and creating enough value that we're one of those players as time goes on. All right, so a lot of announcements here. Um, can you give us a little insight to kind of the team and you know what, what you're most proud about yeah. for there? I mean, it, it's kind of tough. It's uh, you know it, we, we know uh, you know the software piece uh, you know came right. from some of the acquisitions, right. the hard drive, you know helium you've been working on for a while. So you know. 
I hate to ask you to, to choose, but you know, what, 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 what do we take away as kind of the highlight from well, this? Well, I think first I want to talk about, I think, the cultural we're building at HGST. What I'm proud of is how our employees, whether they be new employees through acquisition or the traditional employees that have been with HGST a long time, have really embraced this culture of change. Uh, we couldn't do any of this if it were rejected uh, by the Borg, if you will, there would be no opportunity to successfully make this transition. So part of transitioning a company from uh, one business model to another is a cultural impetus. And, and frankly, I'm most proud of that. It's really been an underpinning and enabling uh, capability to some of these things we've been able to do. So we can, we can think of very interesting market strategies. We can find interesting companies to acquire. But if we don't create the right capability within our culture uh, to deliver that, uh, we're not going to be successful. But now, if I come to the products themselves, I think, listen, the Helium platform has been uh, something we've been very excited for a long time. We've been uh, slow to push the gas pedal on that. From what you heard from us today, we're fully down on the accelerator, so I think that's, that's a huge deal. And I think I would combine this general, uh, what you heard from both Gus and Dave around uh, value-added solutions, really this general acceptance that our future is going to have a heavier software component but with a tightly integrated flavor relative to the hardware. So th those two things, it's hard to pick on the specific products, but I mean, we're excited about them all. All right, so Mike, you know, it, I, us in the analyst world always like to come up with the analogies. So okay. you, you definitely rejected the, you know, uh, is HDST going to be kind of the next EMC? Yeah. But when I see things like uh, creating, uh, you know, flash clustering and volume management, right. maybe are, are you guys the next Veritas? You know, <laughs> or are you going to, you know, where, 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 where do you, strategically want people to think of HGST as they think about storage going into this next yeah, era? Yeah, I think strategically we want to we want to be a storage infrastructure enabler uh, and we want to, we're going to do that in a way given I think strategies that I've reasonable insight to with a number of our um, of our customers that's compatible with them. So we think there's uh, a very long runway that we can innovate in a way that they'll want to buy these increasingly uh, valuable building blocks that we're going to deliver. So yeah, we think of ourselves as a storage infrastructure provider, uh, and that's beyond devices, so there will be a level of data services that we need to deliver with that, there's no question. I think how that evolves over time will be interesting, and we're going to do that in a collaborative way with our best uh, and most important customers. Great, and will you continue on the uh, is acquisition that you've proven that's a good strategy for bringing in new, new innovation, new folks? Yeah, I, th I think we uh, will look at all ways to grow, certainly organic, we'll take these assets we've acquired and grow on them, but uh, we're continuously looking for new and interesting innovative technologies. I don't think uh, we're necessarily done with the acquisition campaign. Okay. Good, and what's keeping you up at night? Besides, we got to today. This was well, a yeah, yeah, this today. But but actually, what's <laughs> great keeping job me up, to the team? They did a good yeah, job. Yeah, they really did. It was a fantastic job by all of them. Uh, I think what keeps me up at night is we have a lot of change happening. So we're obviously looking at a very dynamic market around us. We have to interpret that and figure out our course in action. And, and then we're now down to, as we discussed today, execution. So we've got to be able to realize and deliver on the promise we announced today. So those two things would be the two things that are top of mind. Good, well those are good things to work on. Execution is always a good thing to stay focused yep. on. So Mike, thanks for stopping by theCUBE. Great insight, a lot of exciting new products, but really kind of a change in direction in terms of adding more of a software component and really trying to move up the stack, as you've said uh, a number of times. So I'm Jeff Frick, we're at theCUBE here at the HGST uh, industry analyst and press event. We're at the Sheridan Palace in downtown San Francisco. We'll be right back with our next segment after this short break.